Well, for us, it feels like a film, like a very luxurious, um, high production valued film. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like our, our narratives, our stories, were almost in parallel. There's uh, the different worlds. There was the world of Ferex, there was a Narkina, there was um, Marn Moth's world in um, Coruscant, there was um, a Kyle, a Cyril's, a Cyril and uh, Dedra's world. It's a beautiful beginning to a big story where each of the characters has a vital space of their own, so we really lean into each of them. and. Obviously, you're right, Mon Mothma's was very much in the world of the Senate and Coruscant, and um, it felt very luxurious, <laughs> very different to, say, Yavin, where she was in Rogue One. It was extraordinary to be able to begin her story, to go backwards and begin this story in such an antithetical place to where we found her before in Rogue One. There weren't really many discussions about you know, the, the, the afterlife of Kino. Um, I mean, all that we do know is that he survives. I mean, we don't see him die. We see him left. And there is potential, therefore, for, uh, um, you know, for a, further, for, the, for a further life for the character. So, so yeah, but there, were, there were, but there were no, prior to that, there were no discussions at all about, about um, what might happen afterwards. I was just excited enough about, about the arc that, uh, that I had to play, which was, which was a, a really beautifully crafted, um, you know, illustration of a man who has a belief system that gets broken, that then has nothing to believe in, that, that then gets kind of reignited by, by someone who inspires him to to find himself again and then and then self sacrifices so it was, so it was, a, it was a really extraordinary journey to to go on within a within a prison setting in a very sterile prison setting um, a quite a heart quite a heartfelt journey considering the the environment that they're in but that but that's the brilliance as we as we've been saying about Tony Gilroy's writing he provides these um, these environments for characters to th to sort of thrive and survive in, and uh, and you learn you learn about you learn their internal journey, their psychology, their co complex um, f or f or complexities and flaws um, in in response to into in the response to the world that they're in. Tony has created uh, an extraordinary platform of characters, so you know what our ideals are, you know, what our passions are, you know uh, where our individual complications are, you know what we're passionate about. And certainly with Mon Mothma, you know what drives her, you know what secrets she's hiding, you know what she's passionate about, you know what she's frightened of. And that's where we jump off for in season two. And if season one was a year in a season, then from season two, every three episodes, we jump a year. So it becomes this very focused, very lasered juggernaut of storytelling, and it's a very exciting to be a part of. There's something very zeitgeist about, about the oppression that, that is happening in the story, and something that feels that, you know, the one way out and the, and the, the, the battle cry, not the battle cry, but the, the, the desire for freedom um, is something that I think really resonates because of the world that we're living in and, and, the, and the oppression that, that we see all around us. And so, so I, think, I think that's something that, um, you know, that, that, that's why I think he's been taken into, in, you know, he's been accepted in, in the way that he has been by, by, by the audiences that I've met and talked to and the people that respond to the character. Michael Wilkinson is our costume designer. And him, along with our production designer, Luke Hull, they are geniuses of their crafts. And I get to be really heavily involved with Michael Wilkinson, and he doesn't just make costumes, he curates costumes. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we're, as I said, um, waist deep in season two, and I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so excited for you to see some of her outfits, not just hers, but like I was filming the other day and I can't say much about it, but I, I stood in a room full of people 
uh, some of whom I know, some of whom characters I know, and plenty who I didn't. And I just was awestruck at the detail of the work around me. He's invested in detail of, like, supporting artists having their own history. I can't wax lyrical more about Michael Wilkinson and the costumes that I get to wear and collaborate on, and it's a really special and beautiful experience. The, the, the next iteration, the Dolce & Gabbana suits, the, the prison suits, are pretty spectacular, I have to say. A little bit overdone in my mind, but, but you know, it, but, but nevertheless. That is something that I really love about Tony's authorship, that's a beautiful word that you used, um, of the piece, that there are many, many ideals within an umbrella of an ideal, that there are many voices. And, and this is actually talking about for the empire side as well as the, re uh, as the rebellion side, there is nuanced complications, that there is no, there, there is not a, a right, that there is not one voice, that there is not a singularity, that nobody knows Luke Skywalker yet. Nobody knows about the Death Star yet. There's no collective enemy. It's oppression. And oppression has many masks and many veils, and it is insidious. And so they must all find their own individual voices. They must get it wrong. They must fight. They must rise up against each other in order to find a collective. Because it's in that way, like um, Andy was saying, reflective in our world today, we have to be able to have discourse, to have rotten discourse, to have complicated discourse in order to find a common ground. And I think that is what Andor is truly investigating. Mm -hmm.